Good afternoon, I like, or good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, August 1st, 2022, uh, Town of Berlin Select Board meeting to order. With us on my right is Flo Smith. On my left is Carl Parton, Dave Sawyer. With us also is Vince Connie, Town Administrator, and Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. Um, any changes or additions to the agenda? No, sir. Woohoo! <laughs> Public comment. Hearing none, Planning Commission update and community development discussion, Carla. Hi. <laughs> um, so we met with a representative of Vermont Community on Road Development. Um, Tom, you there? Um, with the last Planning Commission meeting. And they do what they call the community visit program. They work with the town, they do focus groups, um, and they identify priorities. And so we had talked about this, I don't know, a couple years ago, and we didn't pursue it. And the, and they only work with, I think, two towns a year. Um, but it's, it's it basically, you know, they do a lot of outreach to try to get people to come. They're, they're pretty aggressive about it in terms of doing mailings. And so they, they try to ensure that everybody gets the work, gets the word. Um, and it, it's one of the reasons I'm interested in it is because it's not focused on the town center. It's simply priorities, right? So, and and they said sometimes towns they do this and they find out that the you know the priorities don't align with what's happening or what you know the planning commission might be doing. But so it's it's very open and very um, and so I'm really interested to hear what the residents will have to say. And I think it will be a good planning tool. And it doesn't cost the town anything except for the mailing of the. Um, the mailings and there's a meal that goes goes with it. So it'd be very you know, cost effective for the town. I'm sure the planning commission budget could cover the, the cost that we'll have to pay. And it's like a four to six month. I think it's a Tom, are you there? Yeah. yeah, I'm here now. So was it like a six month process? I can't remember. It talks about it's 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 about a four month process, but they they usually schedule like three of these community visits. Our likely visit would be somewhere in 12 to 18 months. Um, but the how the process works, we would fill out a very minor application. We would submit it to the um, Council of Rural, Rural Development. They would they would peruse it, uh, give it a thumbs up, and then they would like to meet with the select board to go over this the process of their visit in more detail. And I do have, they get, you know, they left this information, which I can leave with you. It's in their package. Oh, okay, good. Um, and so, I mean, it's got a really diverse board of directors. And one thing that they did say is they're working with Northfield now. And they don't generally work with communities that are so close together, you know, so we probably would have to wait for the, for 2023 as opposed to getting um, picked this year. Um, but it, even if it's, you know, a year, year and a half away, I think it's, it's a valuable tool. And I think we should get on their list, basically. Um, they said that the value of the services, I think, was like $40,000. Uh, yeah, they, they bring in economic development experts throughout the state, and, and they bring a lot of uh, pretty powerful commissioners from the governor's office who, who have the ability to, to get things done and point communities in, in a, a proper direction to get things done. So I think it would be great to, uh, just to have these this this expertise in a room and and do some guidance with our community and and though they don't fund like the in initiatives they do help you they point you in direction where you might be able to get funding based on what priorities are identified so i just think it's a win-win because it really won't cost us much and i think we can get a lot of value out of it um but it does have to be approved obviously by the select <laughs> excuse so so you're saying that this would be funded through the monies in the uh, zoning and planning well, commission? We, well, we, yeah, we can cover the costs that we would have to cover. Any questions for Carla or Tom? The other thing, the other positive thing is they said they do often get um, more people involved in town activities because they do try to get chair, they, you know, they do, they, they pick, there's groups that work on um, what different priorities that are identified. And they try to get somebody that hasn't sort of been involved. And so they said they have had really good luck um, 
getting new people involved in the initiatives and getting new people involved, you know, because it's usually something it, it's something that they're passionate about, that they're really interested in, they'll, they'll get involved and maybe stay involved. So I think that's a bonus too, because, you know, as you know, it's hard to get people to, you know, really pay attention and serve on some of these committees. So I think it's, I just think it's a, a positive thing for the town. Anything else on this? Your motion? I make the motion to approve the Vermont Council on Rural Development's VCRD Community Visit Program as presented by Carla and Tom this evening. And um, our involvement um, will be the community meal and the mailed invitations. Second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And I just also want to say we went to the downtown board today, Tom and I, to give them an update on what's happened with the Newtown Center and Tom did a really good job presenting all the all the work that he's done or that the town's done and um, they seem very wasn't a lot of comments but I think they were pretty impressed by all the all the work that we've done since then and it's great. So yeah, I think we showed them that we really are serious and that we're gonna um do it the right way. So that was good too. Thank you everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Carla. 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 Nope. All set. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, I'm out. Yeah, thank you. Good evening. <laughs> uh, Dodge, Dodge Farm Road status and discussion. Yep. Um, so we've got some representatives here. Tim's here. Um, the initial inspection that we've done, they've done the work, a lot of the work up there. <laughs> we had some comments on a, a couple of things still, um, but they seem to be maybe a, a couple of issues for, for discussion tonight as well. I'll let you, uh, let you speak to it. Um, so yeah, like you said, we're at and, right. when they were, when McDonald was up there doing the work, when they were getting close to being finished, went up, just kind of looked at it a little bit. Looked pretty good, but it's hard to tell when everything's that fresh, how things are going to so since then, I've been out a few times. Um, I just noticed that there's some places where it needs some more material. Um, still getting some erosion on the side of the road. It's where the water's not getting off the road and it's getting back into the road and then traveling down the road and um, making some erosion at a cuts in the road. Um, and then the, the few spots that need some more top cover because there's still some large stones that are sticking out. And I mean, when the town does does or if they accept it, you know, when we grade it, we're going to be pulling up those rocks, and then that's you know, it's got to have enough cover over it. And then um, I noticed you guys have done some paving. The apron got paved on the bottom. Um, and then I still am not sure with, I don't believe there was ever a clear line of end and beginning um, by your guys' driveway. Um, I don't know exactly how far that road went out. Oh, so uh, the thing I notice now is it's like, since the paving got done on your your guys' driveway, it kind of comes out into the, and this is where I'm not so clear on how far from the Calder sack out to you guys, the town is going to accept and maintain that deal. But like the driveway got paved quite far out into the road, so it turned to go toward the well field, the corner of the blacktop is out fire enough where like so if we were to plow up in there, we're gonna catch the edge of the driveway and then you know, it would be very difficult to the way it is shaped and paved now, it would be very, very, very difficult to grade up to that. And then it's we and then again like on the town side of thing, we do not try to go in any we don't try to turn around or try to drive across any residential asphalt because they'll 
especially the greater when it articulates or whatever, it'll tear asphalt up pretty good, especially being fresh or or thin. Like when we pave the road, the pavement's usually almost four and a half inches thick. I don't know how thick the driveway is. There's supposed to be two two inch compacted. I don't know how they're making money, but they got a lot of six inch pavement. So the uh, corner you're talking about is the corner closest to the water gates? Yes. I don't think so that and that's where I say I like I don't know how far the town's gonna accept or whose right away that is, if it's the town's right away that goes to the ball field gates. Yeah. I believe it's ours. Like yeah. So so I don't know. Definitely would have to like look at doing something something different's gonna have to happen right there in that area with the way that they raised the road and contoured it to keep the majority of the water to the right hand side as you're traveling up the road. Um, and then I know when I and it's nothing to you guys and I don't know it could be anything to anybody really but um, I think it's Comcast, is that who's got the buried cable up through there? If it's literally on the edge of the road, then it's no more than a space shuttle. That's another reason why it's nice to get some cover over that. So um, if we ever have to maintain it at some point, as far as ditching and whatnot, <laughs> that cable, most buried cable is supposed to be 18 inches deep. But I know that they did say that they were running into a lot of, like McDonald's, that they were running into a lot of ledge in places up through there. So it's like everywhere else in Vermont. That might be as deep as they can get the cable. But I don't think it's, it's not like some way widening water would swirl and go through. It's at least 12 inches, if not more. Stone. Extended, extended um, we mentioned the wire stones earlier. Yeah, they must have used three inch stem screen when they did that. Because I know the edges are all what, what I would believe would be three inch stem screen. But, um, granted, granted, they must use stuff out of their quarry. Looks like it's the last two feet of the road is like three inch dense screen more. It's got a little bit of top dress over it, but you can see there's like the larger stones that are sticking up here and on the edge of the road. When we grade that, that stuff's going to pull right out and be all on the road. Does not make could, could I interject a quick question? Could could you introduce yourselves? Tim's talking about, uh, to, mostly to the people maybe watching or. Roberta Haskin, I know both of you, but not, some people might not. Well, you're right. <laughs> so that's where you go up in there and they've got like the circular. Part right there. Is that going to remain like that? Because that they asked, asked the circle. It, that's getting taken out. Well, the, the inner it's already out. The inner part is gone. Now it is just a. Big that's what I mean. It's just a big space. round yes. area, yeah. and then you've got the drives that go up to three lots on the right hand side. Yeah. Where you you're not. That's not a part of what they want accepted, right? No. And so, okay. not at the time. Not at this time. So, so it go up through past that circular area to the to the well house. So yes, yeah, well, so Dodge Farm only goes to the cul sac and then it's water water works water works way is the, to the short, short yeah section to the left. So basically, you'd be going up to your driveway up to that point there. Yes, yeah. because then it does go past that. Well. Yeah, we plow all the way up to the well field, so we go up. Through yeah, up to the gate, up past that. Okay. Right. But you're not you're not going up waterworks way. You're just you're just staying on 
it's really dodge one little bit and go turns into the right way. I mean, one works when he starts at the bottom house and goes to the middle of the race house. That's what one works way. It's the only the only map that I had seen was a dodge track with just one alter size. Just two of them. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. So there's two roads that are probably technically are going to be now. Do you have any concerns with that second turn that goes to the left coming back out? You know, if you're coming down the short turn at the very bottom, not at the very bottom, but it's just the first house on the right, the yeah. Last corners, yeah, yeah. We had some discussion about it. It wasn't, you know, what I mean, it's not. It's not the most the way it's sloped. It seems like if it yeah. we could have problems with the truck right, right there, right? Because I'm up there building right yeah. now. That's why I'm, I'm oh, coming right. down out of there. I see no. It is. It could be a. You know, I mean, it's 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 already has been a problem as far as people staying on the road. Right there. Yeah, that's not. I know uh, you had some guidelines originally for sight distance. You know, I mean. Yeah, the original a, road, I don't know why it just didn't go straight down. Yeah, straight, I was straight looking straight at that. I just coming down out of there, it seems like if we got a it's a little slick, oh, yeah, we could have yeah. some yeah. issues there. Yeah. The truck, no, so, it, yeah. it definitely yeah. has that. Yeah. 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 The only other thing is that I yeah. have on that, my question is, is if we took that over to town and down the road. If, uh, if they wanted that paved up there, would they be sharing costs of paving of that? The HOA? or Because at some point, I can feel a few years down the road that they're going to you don't want to see that paved. So, so if you're bringing that up, I know doing some research and whatnot, every road, I do not know the exact dates. But it's been a while that the town has accepted in a housing development like that, like Parkins Fire and Plateau Drive, all them down there, Applewoods over here. Um, they've all been required to pave the road before the town has accepted it. One, it cuts down extremely on the town side of maintenance things. So when we accept it, we normally just have to plow it, salt it, and, and do some light maintenance. Yeah, and then. Uh, low traffic roads like that. You know, I mean, you're looking 20 years, 25 years before you have to start thinking about repaving paving it. Yeah. Where gravel road, it's going to be graded a couple of times yeah. a year. It's muddy in the spring down, we're putting gravel into it. We're gonna, you know, I mean, then we're back up there, we're going to have to keep ditching it. Because one thing, nice thing about pavement roads is the ditches don't fill up because you don't get your sand runoff or just regular they're run off to keep the ditches filled up or to keep filling the ditches up. Yeah. So that that was discussed early on. So but yeah the town has you know all the other developments involved required. They were paid. required to be paid before yeah, they part of the agreement before the town accepted. I guess uh, that was I guess my question was is if it if there was that it was going to get paved in the future if the HOA was going to chip in or, you know, if they made any concessions to think about paving that down the road, if the town accepted it. <clears throat> yes, my response to that is if the town accepts it, it's a town road. If it's a town road. Why? Well, then I guess at that point it'd be a stay, stay a gravel road at that point and just be great. You know, what I could see is as, time goes on that people in the HOA is probably going to want to well, have it paved. That was discussed before we even thought it. Pretty yeah. old. And, yeah. Um, and there was some for it, some against it. So I think any issue in instances. Yeah. Okay. But I had a pretty good price last year to do it, but I'm sure that's going in the middle. Just one thing I want to, I want to point out for everybody so that it's clear as well. In our acceptance policy, right under under acceptance in section twelve, and you guys received a copy of this early on as well. When the road has been completed and inspected, the town can begin normal maintenance for twelve months. So there's a year after twelve months of maintenance. If there's no serious defects that have been observed, 
The deed will then be recorded that the road will become a town highway in accordance with the provisions of the, the statute, right? During the 12 month initial acceptance period, any flaws or defects which are pointed out to the developer or owner will be their responsibility to correct. During this period, the town will order and erect any of the necessary signs as well for that 12 month period. So, again, just so everybody's aware, even when the board accepts it, there's a year goes by before it's, before it's fully recorded to make sure it goes through all the cycles of the seasons and any anything that pops up, you know, is still responsibility of the of the homeowners for that first year to take care of. So if this is the case, rather than things got so concerned right now, rather than address that with the town's work. Well, he's got some concerns now. There might be some concerns at all. There might be some concerns during this 12 month period. Yeah, it would, would just be concerned after this for now. Be concerned. Oh, I'd like to know that you know, we've had an engineering study before. In that study, we were looking at maybe 50 yards of gravel for 4,600 feet grading the rest of it. And that was town standards A76 and B71 for, for the water works way. At just doing that 50 yards, it was 350 yards, $40,000. Plus, I like go across the grass. Let's try it. See, see what happens within a one year period. Well, the other thing is the town is using this road. I mean, you're part of the association and you're using the road. You've got to use the road. So to add to that, she is right. We do use the road, but um, it was before my time. The agreement was was the town plows and sands the road all through the winter months as their contribution. And I could be wrong with that. That's yeah. not sure, but the town was contributed for the plowing and sanding of the whole road during the winter months for the usage to get the wealth going. That is the agreement. You're listed as, the town is listed as a percentage contributor to the HOA in view of that percentage contribution. So right now the big concern is the way the water is ru not running off the road. It's not crowned enough, or it's, it's like the corners that they was just talking about. Yeah. They're still holding water. It's, I don't know, noted that, but you know, around the other corner, there's a. 20, if I didn't measure 20, 30 foot section where it's started into being three inches deep where the water's staying on the road and scouring the road and then eventually finding its way off, but it's already started to pull gravel off into the grass. We talked about that. Eric Boyd, you remember, we were going to clear that right side going up so that we didn't have all the water going across the road to the east side of it. Yeah, and that it's, so that's what they've done. But it's still staying up on the side. It's not getting off the road surface, is what I'm saying. There's no runoff at that point. You meant to Larry. No, there is where, where it is, is there is. <laughs> but 
there's a firm of grass along the edge of the road up through there. But what you can see happening is, is in the winter, that water, the way that's going to come down to it's just going to make a sheet of ice. So with that road pitching to the right around that curve. It's they've already be, had, you know, in the wintertime, they've already had numerous vehicles off, off that side. Off yeah, that I can side. see it happening. Or, at, so you make the first corner come down and then it takes the left. left. They go straight, straight down to the field. Oh, the snow Here in it. There's some probably some speed involved because people yeah. have made some pretty good headway out of <laughs> into the snow. But other than the water sitting on the road there, I'm trying to visualize this. I haven't been up there for some yeah. time. So the water comes down, and is, is it a low spot in the road? Well, or just the way the road is, if you're coming down, then it starts to curve to the right. It's like that the water is shedding and, and running to the right, but it's it's not. It's hard. It's a it's different hard setup to be able to get it. With, with yeah, that style of a road. The, the layout of the road is it's hard to keep your crown and take a corner and keep it somewhat level so it's not so you're not a real not. in line. And then I seen what you were saying is up past that cul-de-sac and they, well they, even before that it's like there was they, it was still material you know big stone because you can see if you start to grade that it's just gonna yeah. now is, push is, out. is it just big stone or is it ledge? No it's yeah they're big like cobbles. Yeah. yeah. So like they're building a big a base and they didn't get the finished material up over it. I guess I haven't seen this. But, you know, to the, the paving aspect of it was is it, it was brought up early and originally, and then I think it's kind of, I don't know where that's all gone, but like. I, I can look back at the meeting, but I believe that the previous board, um, Voted to only pave like 50 to 75. I think it was, yeah, just the end apron. Yep. I remember them voting on that. Yep. So as you come off the apron, you're heading up the hill. The first corner's to the left, right? Go to the right, to the right. right. And then it'll go to the left. And it's where you make that left that you just start to go up, you'll see where the water is. Yeah, you, it's a transition. You from go right off to the left. apron and then you start to veer to the left, then you go right, and then you go back to the left. It's, it's a little, little, little snake. Yeah. That last left, you're approaching Larry's driveway. Rather than grade that with a straight grade, yeah, so no, no 24 feet, we had this hybrid peak in the center, not in the center, maybe there. You might have like 18 feet uh, on that side and the other 12 feet. It's kind of, it is kind of shallow a little bit. There's, there's really no place to put it. You could try to keep not all that water, water across there. coming down across that, that section. Now on the uphill side of that, is there any ditching or is it just flat? Oh, ditch. Yeah. There's there's this well the small ditch because it's it's ledge so they they really couldn't get any depth to it they couldn't get any depth out of it hmm. and the only trouble you're seeing is in the winter with the icy so it will. <laughs> Be worse. <laughs> it's going to create. You know, I mean, it's always going to be a problem. And it's nothing. It's nothing to the people that live there now, as far as like the shape of the road. Like the original design of the road should not have had a two yes, switchbacks in it. It should have yes, just gone straight from the turn cut. The Larry cells. You know, Larry's house, like straight up through, and that's yeah. I don't know, and I 
The only thing I can see now, as far as like looking back and kind of the lay of the land, is probably the amount of fill that they would have to, as it drops off a little bit into that sag. It looks like to be where the driveway is, we have more followed the lay of the land. So they wouldn't have had to put so much fill in to make a straight approach. They weren't skimpy with building. No, and that's the, the thing. Like, top, I don't really, that's a lot better than what was required. And where the design of the road, I don't know why I had the two switchbacks right in it. Can work. Like when so that's going to create a washboard. I mean, it's going to, and it does. It gets washboarded to drop up to the cars. How steep is it up in there? The beginning of it is, I couldn't put a percentage so much on it. Or very good. I don't know. You've got a guess. Dave, um, and I, those are uh, like eight percent on that hill. And then it kind of, flattens out as you get up in there. It's still an uphill climb, but it's definitely not as bad as it is to get to the to Larry's house. Is there any maintenance technique or drainage or culvert that could be put to, to get rid of that standing water? And it sounds like that's going to be a maintenance. It's not so much standing water as in perpetuity. You can't get the water. The road needs to, the road needs to be higher than the, the grass area. So the grass is the low, the low end, so that's where the water goes. Not as much it stays on the road and then runs down the corner, and then when it dips back the other way, that's when the water comes out. It must be that the ledge is pretty close to the surface, right there. Without say, you know, you know that, yeah, without digging around right that, yeah, thing. to be able to dig it deeper <clears> through <throat> there. Do you? Do you know from like Larry's driveway down? Well, they opened up the forest across, and there was wedge even along the road, but it wasn't you know, at surface. Yeah. So if the town's doing the plowing and the salting now, and we take it over, it's just the grading and the. Uh, the gravel and stuff to and the ditches to, when, to it the ditching when it's time. Now, do you guys know if there was any maintenance done? I don't think prior to this time, as far as what it was established, the one I think it's been here upwards of 10 years or maybe better, and nobody's even touched it in the greater. It really wasn't that bad, but of course it didn't have as much traffic. Yeah, you know, until two years ago, there was only two houses up there. So, where is this water coming from? Rain. Just rain. Just run off through the through the grass. See, now all, all the houses are on the high side of the road, so everything is kind of, you know, I mean, when you build. Change lay the land, you turn the runoff, more you know I mean people are ditched their driveways. So now if uh, third house up, you know, I mean their driveway goes up across. So now instead of you know I'm just guessing and speculating, you know, the water comes out off the side hill, hits their driveway, now it runs outside of their driveway and goes to the road versus before there probably was anything there, it probably just slowly leached its way down through the field. You know, I mean, when you start building and doing construction, you, you gather water, you turn water, you point water in certain directions. And uh, it's like the one I'm on now. Before they did it, I walked it. And what had happened was from the woods line, it came down and from the road, it kind of like was, was raised. So there was a swell behind it that followed the woods down. Well, now it comes down, there's not a swell. Well, there is a little one. But then it directs it's directing it down towards the road. Yeah. It's not where it naturally went down through because they dug to you know, put the foundations and stuff in, and now they more or less leveled it out. And I'm curious when they do the mound system over there, if it's gonna create even more of a you know, it's gonna direct more towards the road area, I think too. So is there any way to mitigate the water moving to the road? 
Oh, there's ways. Yeah, it's but there's a ditch line all the way up through on that side. You know, that's what it's for. It gets that water. But it but it holds the water all the way down yeah, to those that, corners. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. If you look well, at some it, of it gets very cross. There's two cross culverts. Is it? There's two down. cross culverts up there, so it does take some of the water, but then what does get to the road goes down the road. Um, so there's no real easy way to mitigate that last little bit of water that, that that's giving you the trouble. To raise the road some, the ideal would be that that's not going to happen. I'm not percent sure about it. It's just to, to straighten the road. But that's, you know, I mean, that ship sailed a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. But is there any way to put a basin in and culvert another culvert down like just before that? I mean, I don't know how deep it is right there. I'm just wondering. In the corner? Yeah, uh, just before you hit that last corner, you know, before you hit that where it gets bad. Is it is the cross first cross pipe is up above the you've probably seen the ledge that sits right yeah. on the side of the road. The, yeah. the pipe, the last Crossbite coming down the hill is right where they ball the grass on the and left. It's just up above there. There's one at Larry's driveway also. That's yeah, right. down and just yeah. above Larry's driveway. There's another one up. Uh, and there's one by Lannis. So there's Lannis. three in above the corner. And then okay. so and then one of the problems I took some pictures of it, not very pictures. Um just above Larry's driveway is, I think, where some of the some of it might be coming from. Is it's just not ground point enough where it sheds before it gets to the corner. The day I looked at it, it was, it was coming almost to Larry's driveway, and then it was bleeding across the road. And then on the other side of the driveway, where it starts to really turn is where the wash is and then it comes down and then the road pitches back and the water goes down that road and it's washing gravel out off the grass and then as you come down it banks again to turn back to the apron there's more there's a wash started on the inside of that corner but like you know i mean as far as like our practices go we try to keep the roads higher than the lawns some of it's difficult because of the lay of the land and whatnot. Um, but the road needs to be higher than the lawn. The lawns are what except the water where there's not a ditch. I mean that's why we go through I mean we buy almost eight thousand ton of three quarter gravel every year since the piles on this gone. So we go through 8,000, close to 8,000. That's just three quarter. That's not even the inch and a half that we use in the springtime and mud and everything else. So town goes through a substantial amount of gravel trying to keep the roads crowned and so the water gets off and high enough when the water gets off and we can't pitch. Because the thing with lawns is sod makes sod. You know, that's There's no way you can take a ditch on the top side. It's too shallow. I don't know. I don't think anybody's ever done any exploratory as far as like putting a ditch on that side of the corner. Hmm. So I see three kind of options here. We can either approve the town taking it over, deny the town taking it over, or perhaps a third option would be to delay until we see well, probably the worst worst case scenario is spring spring runoff. I would guess as far as the washout a delay to see what the spring washout does, and then even then we could make the decision there a little more educated about what's going to happen with the uh, 
watershed and uh, and start the 12 months in in uh, May, uh, the 12 month period. So uh, those are probably our three options right now. Right? We're kind of getting to the details of designing, which probably isn't our job, right? So, so. Yeah, have you been up to see the? I've driven by it, but I haven't thought of looking at it that closely. <laughs> I stayed on the road, I know, yeah. and I went there in the winter. So, yeah. well, can we hold this till next meeting? Because it's just a discussion; it's not a decision. Mm -hmm. Then we can each go up and take a look. Because, quite frankly, I'm a little lost here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so we'd have a good look at where the water goes. That's an Ellis farms already. It's cold and it's good as any other one. I'll tell you that. They look better. Yeah. So we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting again. Yeah. Just a silly question. Do we want to start the meeting up there? Site good. visit. The board do a site visit. And move back here. Yeah. I think that's an excellent idea. Start with Anything else on this, Roberta? Anything else, Tim? You'll be there, of course. <laughs> thank you all. Yeah, thank you all for coming in and discussing this. Um, uh, board approval decision on private road named Founders Way. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Calendar's away, private road. There's a, there's a little uh, pamphlet for the picture on the back of the page. And you're, you're, uh, okay. It's basically the little four trailer mobile home cart right across from uh, Irving over here. Uh, now that they have four units on it, it's considered a, a private road and it has to have a name. Okay. Uh, so it's going to run through 911 and, and Founders Way is what's come up as they recommended it. It's come up okay as well. Just need the uh, board approval for that. I make a motion to uh, name this uh, subdivision road, private road, Founders Way. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh Aye. -huh. Those opposed, motion carries. Um, Partridge Farm stormwater update and discussion. Yeah. So quick one from uh, my side. I did get another note uh, email back from uh, Terry Purcell um, regarding the cost. He had to correct himself when he said there was no cost. He went back and did a little more digging and found there is a cost. It's uh, basically $160 an acre for the impervious surface. So I need to calculate what that means for us for the town roads that we own in there. So if there's if there's two acres of town road that we're gonna own owe three hundred and twenty dollars towards that uh, for the design for the that portion of the uh, the annual operating fee for that permit. Um, for the permit itself, um, what I've discovered Again, what I've been told obviously is correct that we need to be a co-applicant on that. Um, we have the opportunity, it looks like, to if we wanted to participate from a cost perspective through the planning portion of it, which I think they're cool, we're going to pull back somewhere between 18 and 19,000. Um, as the town, we can apply for that and more than likely get a 100% grant to cover the cost of that. So we would basically pay for the planning portion of their development of that stormwater system. That I thought the, the deadline participation. Did that was through that ARPA fund money? No. Oh, it's a different one? Regular okay, regular Okay, because they had program. one that the deadline was just last week. Huh? Yeah, that was like that was a different one. Yeah. Okay. So we can potentially qualify for that. I'll explore that a little bit more. Um, but that way we'd be contributing to that. And again, there's, I can't find anything that says that we're obligated to pay for the building portion of that stormwater runoff. We pay for the, we participate in the permitting, we pay our, our whatever acreage coverage we have about for that permit. The rest of it is really on the homeowners association. So we could participate through a planning grant. 
Cool. So that's my update on that. Um, I'll continue to look more and more into the details, but yes, if I had to make a recommendation, I said in good faith, I would say in good faith, we can get we can get the 100% uh, coverage for the planning. That would be our contribution. And then going forward, we just pay the uh, yearly permit costs of 160 per acre. That's just for our part portion of it. Correct. The so road, the road. Whatever the road coverage is acreage wise is what we would pay for. If it doesn't come up to three acres, I got to calculate it. I haven't measured the roads yet to see uh, what that comes up to be. But I'm just wondering if the if if um, the impervious part of the road would be if the total is under three, we wouldn't have to have a stormwater permit, would we? Yeah, but it's the whole the whole it's, it's oh. because it's combined with the whole area. The whole thing. It's yeah. almost I think ten acres. Yeah, we have to be included according to what uh, okay. ABC is telling us. Yeah. So draw out a blank here, but to, it, to, to, <laughs> what you just said is that we that that we could participate. Through the through a grant process for the funding and permit for the planning purposes of the of the stormwater system runoff design. Okay, for the design, we're still going to have to pay the, the regular fees as part of the permitting the permit process yeah. on a regular basis. But it's yearly, I think, right for that permit uh, for that waste uh, stormwater runoff, right, which is one hundred sixty dollars an acre, whatever that is. But again, in the in the bigger scheme of things, I think the homeowners association there was looking for us to participate in the building of the, the building and probably maintenance as well. Which, yeah, you know, there's nothing tying us to, to do it. that 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 I've seen at this point. That's why I was just sitting there trying to think of how to make the motion. What you what you just explained to us without getting us into. I have a quick question before you do. Yeah, uh, I don't even. I was going to take it. So I'm, 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 I'm a little curious. This is obviously a, there's a, a contractor that's doing the planning and designing. We are, we weren't involved in in choosing that uh, contractor. We were there wasn't a bid process, so we're just coming in and taking whatever they give us for a dollar amount and a figure to do this work. Right? Is that all right? <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's... well, we can get the planning planning part of it done for no cost through a grant. Right. Yeah, that's there's still a cost. It's not yeah. directly out of our town budget, but there's yeah. still, <laughs> we're still paying it. <laughs> yeah, but we're spreading out a little bit. Yeah. Well, actually, it's just for a discussion tonight. Make a decision. Correct. I, I want to okay. get a little bit more. Mm -hmm. right. You're making nervous, Dave. <laughs> well, that's why I'm trying to think of because right. I don't want to put myself. I don't want to yeah. make a motion that ties us into something right. mm -hmm. down the road. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's why I was trying to help you because I agree on what you're. Yeah, by the way you explained. Given we're at a premature stage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Vince, Vince has got some more groundwork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And and I wasn't quite clear about. You're pretty sure. That they won't try to also have us contribute to the maintenance and no, they want us to contribute to the the, the construction. The way I wrote oh, okay. the letter, no, right. the, exactly. in the package there, I think they want us to participate in the construction okay. and the uh, and probably the maintenance of it as well. Which I don't think is a good idea. Yeah, I don't think that we can be tied to it. I remember when this thing first came out, the state identified those areas and they came out with that program. Whoever it was that was writing the thing is that we could partner with the town. Same thing with Westridge Trailer Park. Partner with the town to do the design and the build of it. And I'm saying, why would the town get involved? They don't own the roads. They don't own any of the thing over there. That's the problem with this. And it was somebody that wrote now. Exactly. We own the roads here, but but I still don't Should feel. Yeah, I still <laughs> don't feel that 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 we're obligated by the town to to do that. No, so. Yeah, like I said to Vince earlier, like I'm not I'm not sure where I understand like what they're trying to do, but as far as like our side of things, it all comes to the ditch. Theirs all kind of run to the bottom of the hill yeah. on separate angles to collect one ditch because there's one culvert. Because we had this discussion a few 
months ago or a month ago on the topic, and I haven't checked it since. There's one, it all comes to one, there's one culvert that crosses our road at the railroad tracks at the bottom of the hill, and then it crosses underneath the railroad tracks, and then it runs into a long ditch that goes all the way down the side of the railroad tracks behind the trailer park where Capital City used to park all their cars. So it's not like it directly dumps straight to the river. It's not a stormwater system that has pipes that pick up all the water and take it right to the river. So it, it does have like a sediment runout area through that ditch. Through the ditch now, and it's a fairly sizable ditch. Well, I don't tell you, just the, the numbers that I'm hearing for the trailer park and some others that I've been involved in, it's big money. It's not they to to have basically they're calling it a rain garden. So yeah. it's just catching that's the it, it's that's crazy. The new, the new name for it all. Yeah, rain garden. That's just what? Yeah. Is that project that we did last fall on the other end of Crosstown? We had to do two retention ponds for our stormwater project to slow the water and then give it a chance for the sediment to drop out before it ventured on down its way. We'll be seeing this one again in the very near future, if I'm sure. <laughs> Anything else on this? If not, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, applications. I make a motion for the approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications as follows. Payroll warrant 23-03 for payroll from July 17th to July 30th, 2022, to be paid on August 3rd of this year in the amount of $41,962.81. Also payable warrant 23-G03 with checks 22-173 to 22-192 for payables in the amount of $103,857.60 and the June general journal entries as well. Second that motion. Any discussion? I guess I have a couple questions. I think this is in the right spot. So I was just taking a look at uh, a few items, and I, I could ask these anytime, I suppose, behind the scenes, but I'm just curious, the um, payment to Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, is that a, a yearly payment? It is, 30, yeah. Okay, 3,800, roughly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, also just curious about uh, um, the police overtime, um, and uh, I was... And I, and I don't have the old ones to compare, but if now that we're at full strength on the force, if overtime is being reduced? Um, we're not actually full strength. We do have one of our people out oh, in operation. Just went out, okay. I know we had a I couple mean, yes, of training. I did notice this payroll was reduced a little bit. Yeah, so we we had a gain of two and a loss of one. Okay. Basically the two back from the academy and then well, going out on and a new hire right and then the new hire one of them has to have another officer be with him oh. for a certain period of time yeah. so there's an fto time so the other thing and this this may just be something in the contract that i could probably look at myself but it, it looked like uh, we had um 10 hours uh, personal use for the police and then overtime also in that same 40 hour span so they got overtime over and above personal hours. Is that how the contract reads that they can do that? Yeah, okay. I believe so. Because, um, you know, when they're called out or whatever, they have to be there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the final thing I looked at, uh, the laptop purchase. How many laptops did we get for the 29000 That's laptops and docking stations. Uh, I believe it was 10 laptops. Okay. All right. Is that, does that come with any... Service, uh, service, and uh, uh, I'll software. And and I, I believe there's uh, three years. Um, and RB Tech will be setting up all. Oh. But that will be additional fee. Yes, yeah, RB Tech will be, be an additional fee. And we'll also have to have additional software. Probably, uh, again, what RB Tech is recommending is Office 365 for each of the workstations that require it rather than a server. 365 that we have now because we basically share it and it does slow the system down as well. Anything else on this? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, round table, Carl? Uh, it was brought to my attention and, and you know, I think uh, voting integrity and voter confidence in our elections is something that is very important to me. Um, that, uh, as I mentioned, we do, we did the whole state purchased new uh, electronic voting systems. Um, it wasn't announced by the secretary of state. It was kind of a, a quiet purchase, uh, of a company associated with dominion who may or may not have uh, you know, new stories written about them, positive and negative over the past few years. Um, and uh, just recently, uh, every new voting system had to send back their programmable chips to be reprogrammed because there was an error. Um, so I just want that, with that in mind, I'm going to, again, plant the seed that I think it's very important uh, that for the first general election, and I'm going to document a letter and I'm going to send it to neighboring towns and communities as well. But on the first general election, I think it's important for us to do at least a, a spot hand count to ensure the quality of the count made by the brand new machines. I don't, I don't think that's showing distrust or disrespect, but trust and verify. And voters should be able to know that we can have confidence in our elections. And we can do it on a small scale in our town. We can't do it for the whole state or the whole country. But Berliners can know that when they cast their ballot, it was counted properly. And it, it wouldn't take much. You know, we just maybe take one contested race. That's, that's pretty close. Uh, and just, you know, a group of, of uh, election officials sits down and hand counts that one race. And so we know, know they work the way they're supposed to work. And I can tell you that the Secretary of State's office in the last election did they do they do an audit. Um, they take the electronic vote count from five towns that they choose, or maybe six towns they choose randomly, or they choose privately, not randomly, and one hand counted. And they take those machine scan ballots and they machine scan them with an outside vendor. But the outside vendor um, in this last election had six months. Uh, of published data, they everybody knew what the number was supposed to be, and I'm not saying again casting any aspersions, but that's just a machine checking machine. So, I think uh, a hand count on in, in November would be worthwhile. That's well, in September um, or August, it's, yeah, it's not going to be that big a. I mean, I, I'm not foreseeing a big turnout, and it'd be a lot easier to do the check. On that election yeah. in November, well, I, I I prefer a general election, <laughs> <laughs> and they might be programmed again between August and November. With the oh, they have to be. So there you go. So that's why. <laughs> Does that put on the agenda? Well, I think. Uh, if we need to, I guess. Uh, if you want to vote on it, then yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything, Dave? No. I'm just on this, accepting this town roads and stuff. I'm it, it's going through my head why why all these other developments we've required them to have paving uh, to cut down on the maintenance and how this kind of skated by and not. I remember hearing about it, and I remember voting on it when we talked about the paving down the end, but the more and more I see that up there, I'm a lot less comfortable with it not being paved. That's just my opinion. But you guys make that decision. Get up there and see. I think it's great that we're going to be doing the site visit, be able to see it firsthand, and appreciate everything you brought forward, Tim, so that we can mull it over. Yes, I wanted to add that the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department on August 13th is going to have a recruitment open house, and they are offering folks to come for welcome participation. There will be some trainings and on-site um, activities, and so they wish for anyone in the town interested in participating, and it will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Again, it's an open house specifically for recruitment, and all are welcome.
and that's on August 13th at the Four Corner Station. Just on that, Joe called me, and all judge couldn't be here tonight. He didn't think he'd be able to make it, but he wanted me to extend an invitation to the board members to pop in sometime during those hours. Just to it's wonderful. Come, just to say hi and our department from there. That's great. That would be good. So I've extended the invitation. Thank you. That's great. Anything for you, Vince? Just, just a point, a note. Um, there is a an email in there that I received uh, last week. I think it was twenty yeah, eighth from our neighbor at the end of the street, um, talking about the uh, use of the uh, garage for contractors parking in their job trailers again. Um, still not not happy with that. He thinks they should be up in the industrial park and not sitting out here. So. Yeah, the letter's in there. Uh, and review it. Give me your thoughts at another time if you like on that. You think it's just because he don't like seeing the equipment drive by? It, it, that's that's primary, exactly that's it. And, and he's very clear about that. That's exactly why. He does not like the traffic by his house. Right up front about it. That's the reason. I think that equipment's been there a lot, going through there a lot longer than he's been there. So, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be less sympathetic, but, you know, at some point, you don't buy a house near a railroad station if you don't like to hear the train come to, you know. Uh, but I also see the other side of it, that if, if uh, we're parking equipment there, there ought to be some give and take with those companies I think doing something, something right. for us. Think, yeah. You know, he, he gets some benefits. I mean, he had uh, lots of people park there last year. He got the use of a tractor free for how long? Yeah. Did you get the use of the tractor? And the, oh, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You know, so the winter set, they built this out. Yeah. yeah. Lots of, yeah. When we did the construction of the parking lot on Irish Hill, they gave us a lot of material. Yeah. That we had to come across a lot of else. So, so there is some of that going on. So I think that's how I'd respond to him. I mean, personally, is that we do get benefit. Maybe you don't see a direct dollar amount. Well, it comes, you know. he, he has. I, I have mentioned a couple of things about what are set like this as well. Yeah. Uh, but again, his, his main concern is the traffic by his, his building. Yeah. So the increase in it. Okay. So the letter's in there. Again, take a look and want me to put some sort of approval procedure together that you're suggesting or whatever, just let me know. Uh, anything on executive session? No. Sure. <laughs> um, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries.